Hello and welcome to the lecture. So let's continue with the detailed part of REST enable SQL service. And now we are in the Oracle cloud. As you know, we are using this database 2000 throughout this lecture. And here we have enabled the REST service and we are using this as a API request. And here we have another database and this is a fresh one. And now this the first database access the REST source and the consumer is this database. So now moving on to the second database and here going to the tools and opening the Oracle Application Express. So I have set up the workspace already with some user and I'm signing in. So we just uh, consume the REST uh, services. So going to the Postman here you can understand that we have used this as the URL and this will be sending the list of countries. This is from the first database which is the database 2000 and here we are getting all the countries name from that database. And here in this database there is nothing. It's just an empty workspace. There is no tables and any sources and even there is no application. So let's start with creating a new application. So let's use the countries as the consumer from the other database. So let's name this as countries and we'll create it. Let's leave that everything by default and we'll go to the shared components. And here we have the REST enable SQL under the data sources. So going to this REST enable SQL, we don't have any list here. So let's create one. So we have to give some name here. So let's give the same countries. And for the endpoint URL, if you are referring to this URL from the other database, you need to copy up to the schema because the next one is the modules and the templates. We need the complete database thing. This is a REST enable database. So this URL up to the schema name is fine. So yeah, copied that and going here, I'm pasting in the endpoint URL so moving on to next and we need to give some credentials that's for the signing into the workspace so in the workspace which we are using for that database we need to provide the credentials so the basic authentication here i'm just using the workspace details the workspace username and the workspace the username's password so I'm just using that. So let us create it and it will be testing it and it's success. So you can still modify and do anything here. If you want to change the URL, you can go here and change it. Also, you can test it from here. Even the credentials can be modified with this and everything is fine now. So it automatically created. So now moving on to the workspace, I mean the application. So we have created the RESTful source now and now we'll just create a fresh page. Before that, let's run the application and see how the output is for the sample boilerplate application. So let me fill the credentials. So as you can see, it's completely empty and it's in the page one. So let's create a page now that has the sources for the REST enable SQL service. So I'm creating a report, an interactive report, and we'll just give some name as country list. And here I'm, I'll create a new navigation entry with no parent. And it's loading and this is the important part where we are consuming it so here we are using the REST enable SQL service and it will list all the services used in this workspace. So I'm getting the countries and the current schema and these are the tables from the other database. Very interesting for that to see, you know, which we are getting the access to other database objects. So that's how it is for the REST enable SQL. So this is a remote service, right? So we are getting the all the object thing here listed and the columns as well so as you know already we don't have any tables in this database so this is from the other database and clicking on create 
so the page is successfully created and if you refresh and see there's one navigation and looking on to this you'll be getting the data from the other database it automatically passes and from the JSON thing we are getting and yeah so this table is already defined here if you can see that in the countries you know from that list you can see that this is using the rest enabled sql with this interactive report and the remote server is here with the table and view and now we can see that the table name is used so automatically it just fetches the data for that from the table it creates the columns automatically so it's just very quick thing you can just create any application you need not the access to all the objects if the other oracle database is rest enabled you can consume it in oracle apex so that's the main motive behind this rest enabled sql service and following that we'll see more things on this rest enabled sql and we'll see that in the next lecture